All right, a couple case studies and we'll land the plane. So I was in uh, uh, down near D.C. Uh, about five years ago now, and I'd come home from a long trip, and there was a pastor there that I knew from Maryland, and he'd come to the meeting. We were in Virginia, God's country. And uh, this man was at the time in his mid-30s, and he he comes specifically to get prayed for. Now, at the time, he was under care uh, at the George Washington University Medical Center, and he had been for several years because he had multiple sclerosis. And he had unusual manifestations. In addition to the usual stuff, kind of tingling and numbness, his left side was almost completely paralyzed. He walked kind of with a stick, but you know, he sort of swung his leg like that. And if, if I put the microphone In addition, he was three quarters blind in the left eye. Now, when I say that, you probably think 75% of the light was gone, but that's not right. If you think of a watch face, from 12 around to 9, it was pitch black, but from 9 up to 12, so this little quadrant here, from 9 up to 12, you could see perfectly. That's a very unusual pattern of blindness. And it's indicative of the kinds of things you see when evil spirits are involved. There's often a weird fact pattern when spirits are present. Well, anyway, he came forward for prayer, and he received ministry, which included deliverance and inner healing. Um, the inner healing pertained to his father, who was a Baptist pastor, who had tried to kill him at one point with a gun, and he had come at him with a shotgun, and the way it happened was the barrel ended up caught between the left arm and the body wall sticking out the back. His father did pull the trigger. He fully intended to kill him. And the, the gun went off, blew the wall out. But guess which side of the body was paralyzed? Because that's where the trauma was, because the gunshot went off right there. He felt the, you know, the gun there. Um, and just another kind of ministry tip number 16D. Um, a lot of times with healing of multiple sclerosis, this doesn't hold for muscular dystrophy, doesn't hold for um, things like um, I just, my, just dropped out of my mind. Um, cerebral palsy. This is muscular, uh, multiple sclerosis I'm talking about. Many times there is a root that includes some sort of physical abuse or trauma. Many times. And if you clear that, then you can get the spirit that's causing the MS to come out. Many of the diseases you run into where people kind of shrivel up and shrink and they become just a shell of what a human being should be. You know, we're created in the image of God. Right. Satan loves to mock the image of God. So a lot of these weird motor neuron type diseases and so forth, there's demonic activity in there someplace. Note that I'm saying many times, not all, and please nobody feel either defeated or accused when I say that. I'm trying to instruct as I go to give you a few tips and tricks so that your percentages can come up and people who are otherwise in bondage can be healed. So this guy had come with his MS and we prayed for him and we dealt with the trauma of the attempted murder and then we drove out the spirit and I already described for you how his mobility was impaired. He hit the ground, the spirits came out with a shriek and then he immediately jumped up and ran all the way around the perimeter of the church, hands in the air, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, and his vision was fine. Well, he decided he was gonna write a book about this healing, and he, he's done it, um, but before he did, he went back to George Washington University, and he said, I want you to run a full set of tests on me as you have done, so I have a before and after set of data. And they did it, it took him about three months to do it, um, and when he went in for his final assessment, he carried with him the dossier they'd given him over the years from his treatments, and it was about this thick. So, you know, he walks in with his thing, and he sits down at the desk, <laughs> and the doctor slides across to him this thin little folder, and he, the doctor just says, according to this report, uh, you do not have multiple sclerosis. Now, they'd done some um, CAT scans on his head, and MS often gives you lesions on the brain that look sort of like a volcano. 
and all the lesions were gone. The radiograph was in the file. And the, so my friend kind of trying to poke the doctor a little bit, he says, yeah, but doc, what am I supposed to do with this pile of papers that you gave me that says I have MS? I mean, you've been telling me for years that I have this condition. And the doctor says, and you know the lawyers were involved in this, and it was, it, this is a verbatim quote, I am not authorized to comment on any medical report you may have previously received from George Washington University Medical Center. So my friend says, yeah, but doc, wait a minute, you were the one who gave me those reports. And the doctor says, I am not authorized to comment. You know where this is going, right? We don't want to be in court for a misdiagnosis. So, all right. So my friend is healed, and he walks out, and he, he, as he's going through the lobby, there's people in there that have this and that, and this is a neurologist, so there's really serious problems in this lobby. And he said, I realized that day I was the only person who was getting any good news in that doctor's office. Jesus wins. Jesus wins. Now, there's a, there's a postscript to this story, and that is, well, there's two postscripts. Postscript one, in the medical report, they also came back with, your type 1 diabetes has been healed. Not bad. And then the other postscript is that the state of Maryland, where he lived, and the federal government came after him and prosecuted him for felonious receipt of false, uh, of false disability benefits because his job had been making accommodations for him because of his MS. And so they were prosecuting him for a felony and it went to trial and it was ultimately dismissed by the judge because he had dossier one and dossier two. And so they said, there's no, there's no history of this in any case law, any medical, anything, but we see that this is duly certified and so forth, and so in the end, he didn't end up going to jail or paying any fines. Jesus wins. What a story, huh? All right, here's another one. This is a woman that I met in South Australia, which is one of the states of Australia. It is in the south of the country, but, but it, it, it's a defined area. And she had macular degeneration. She was in her 40s, and... Um, she came up for prayer, and as she approached, I looked at her, and I could see that there was a, spirit's, a spirit wrapped around her head, and it looked like a, some sort of headgear, something like a hockey player might wear, that kind of thinner thing so that the guy clocks you on the head with a stick, right? So it kind of looked like that. Um, and she was 95% blind in both eyes from macular degeneration, and she could only see light and dark, no colors, no images, nothing. And she was 100% deaf and had been for years. So we broke the spirit over her, and she was immediately restored to full sight and hearing. Right. Now, as the ministry time progressed, as the ministry time progressed, um, she went and kind of sat back there with her four children who had come with her. And I'm still up praying for people, and I see her doing this. Her children would point at something, let's say, I don't know, that thing over there that says AED or an appeal to heaven. So they'd be pointing at things around the church, and this was a church with a lot of banners and Bible verses and stuff. And so they'd point at them, and you could see her doing this, and she would say something, and the kid would do that. So then she'd do this, and they'd point at something else, and the kid would do that. So what are they doing? They're testing her vision, and she's reading correctly. And then... You know, she, they would, they, she's cupping her ear like this, and, or her kids are cupping their hands over her ear, and they're speaking into her ear, whispering whatever, and she's turning back and repeating to them, and they're shaking their heads vigorously. She had never heard any of her four children's voices, and now she could. Jesus wins. You want one more? We got faith in this room. All right, in this case study, um, we had a woman with a retinal melanoma, and she was attending the same church as the woman I just described who had the macular degeneration. Her eye had been operated on to get the melanoma out because melanoma is so dangerous. And, and the, the eye is a weird place to get melanoma to begin with. So right there, if nothing else, you should go to condition yellow, right? I may not be at battle stations, but I'm like, there's something going on here. So she had this melanoma. She'd been operated on. They'd literally sliced the eye in two, gone in, you know, done their thing, 
sewn it up. And when they sewed it up, they put a nuclear patch in the back of the eye sewn to the retina. They couldn't do a regular radiation from a machine because it would irradiate the brain and everything. So they just put a little tiny patch about this big, sewed it into the retina, and allowed it to emit its radiation into the retina. And then 10 days later, they removed it, and her course of radiation therapy was concluded. So she comes and she wants to be prayed for for this blind eye. And I'm thinking, awesome, you don't even have a retina. So how in the world is this one going to happen? This is going to be a full-on miracle, right? Amen. So we're waiting on the Lord after praying initially and not getting anywhere. And by the way, there's a, there's a lesson in that too. I always tell people, don't make it complex. Don't go looking for demons until you need to look for demons, right? Don't go looking for that 48 generations of inner healing until you need to be doing that. Just try to pray with authority and faith and see what happens. You can get more complex later if you need to. So we'd prayed and we hadn't gotten anywhere. So we're waiting on the Lord. And while we're waiting on the Lord, I see a, a, a vision of a man with a divining rod. Now, maybe you don't know what that is, but it's a Y-shaped stick and he's standing on what appears to be a low dike, maybe about half as high as his stage. And he's, you know, he's doing his thing with the divining rod. And people who divine, it's divination. There's a lot of divination in New Jersey. They use it to find water wells. And that's what this guy was doing. In Texas, they use it to find oil wells. So he's going along doing his thing. And Presently, the, you know, the rod dips, and so they found water. And I said, I'm seeing this picture of this guy doing this. What does this mean to you? And she goes, I described the man to her. I described the clothes and everything. She goes, well, that would be my grandfather. I said, was he a farmer around here? She goes, yeah, he had a place up the road about 100 kilometers. And I said, um, was, he a, was he a diviner? And she says, well, yeah, I saw him do that many times. And I said, well, he committed the sin of divination. And she says... She breaks into tears. My grandfather would never do that. He was a godly man. He loved the Lord. I said, well, you just told me he was a diviner in response to the vision I had. Now, this is a, this is a common snare for many Christians. Like our woman in Taiwan, she was doing something not really knowing it was not okay. And so with this grandfather, who has now gone to the Lord... But he was doing something very serious. Divination is forbidden in Scripture. And by the way, it is one of a number of sins that carries the penalty of death. Guess what happens? We don't kill people anymore. That's good when they transgress. But spirits of death will enter when people commit those same sins that once were punishable by death under the old covenant when we lived under Moses. And so when you run into this stuff, spirits of death are generally present. Maybe not every time, but nearly every time. What is she at risk of due to her melanoma? Hello? Yeah. Death. So I had her confess her grandfather's sin, generational repentance. And then we drove the spirit out. And notwithstanding the surgery that had removed her retina, and the nuclear you know, radiation that had been in there, it, in about three hours, her vision was completely restored. Initially, she could see, but not fully, and then the field of vision widened, the clarity got crisper, and the color came in. It started out black and white. Three hours later, she was done and dusted, as they say. <laughs> 